Hi there. My uh, intention here today is to give a demonstration of the game Guardians. It's um, an old collectible card game from uh, I think the 90s. Um, it's, uh, it's defunct now, but you can find it um, secondhand, not too expensive. The reason I'm showing it now is because um, it's going to be part of my series of card game war games. And you might say, hmm. How is this a, car, a war game? Well, it's quite a tactical war game. It's not exactly like, it's not like Magic the Gathering. You actually have t a tactical space on the board, which is moved around. Reminds me a little bit of the game, the board game Titan, at least in the respect of um, leading bands of fantasy creatures against each other over a variable terrain. So um, I, bought the game without a box. I, it came with this rather nice but battered binder and uh, you can see there's all sorts of cards that come with it and uh, I, I'm not going to explain the thing in great depth. It will more sort of become apparent as we go through. I didn't have a, because I, I think I had, well I bought it like that, I didn't have rules so these rules I downloaded. There's a couple of fan pages on the web that both have that same set of rules. There's a few questions that they leave. It's not the rules as um, given with the game, but apparently they were quite hard to follow. That, that's nicely sort of written out. Gives you a very good um, way into the game. Uh, so um, there might be a few things from the actual game I miss out, not having access to the rules. But this is the basic thing. You each start with a guardian, and you have a stronghold, which is three... Uh, lo uh, locations there, three locations here, and then you have to imagine six locations in the middle of the board, three here and three here that are called the disputed lands. You win the game either by capturing all six disputed lands or by defeating the enemy guardian to get to which you have to pass through the opponent's stronghold at some point, or you defeat five of their shields. And a shield is essentially a, a, a manoeuvre element of your opponent's creatures. Now um, I'll just quickly show you the uh, these two sample guardians that I have. We have Raknam and Tukul. So Raknam is, is a basic. He has some flavour text but no special ability. He has a vitality of 30. Tukul has a vitality of 27. Those are very high numbers so you can imagine these are boss creatures so you're not going to take them down with one or two of your ordinary fellows. This is their base um, card draw at the beginning of each turn. Now the person who has the MDL, the most disputed lands, at the beginning of turn will get plus one. The person who has the least disputed lands will get minus one from that card draw. So those disputed lands are the six in the centre. Nobody controls them at the beginning. Um, and then you also get a plus one on your card draw for being essentially, that's the... Uh, lowest up card, L-U-C. The up card determines who goes first. So the person with the highest up card goes first and the next turn uh, the person that has a constellation who had the lowest and went second will get plus one their card draw. Now this number is very important. This is the number of uh, stones. So you can see each side has, in this case they happen to have seven stones. Some guardians have six, some eight that I have seen. Um, and that enables you to use this number to channel to add to a vitality of any of your creatures. So seven stones will give me seven channelings of adding five to a creature's vitality. You can see Raknam has nine. That's significantly higher. However, Tukul has, an, has a special ability. He's the leader of the many. So if his up card happens to be a small creature, he will get one extra draw card to draw, which can be a great bonus. Um, so that's the, basically the Guardians. Now we start the game by drawing 12 cards each. I do, you, you have to have a, you construct your deck, or you have a starter deck, minimum of 55 cards. Um, and in there, we happen to have a shield, a Tukul. Um, we have a Rock Spirit. A Mist Veiler. So these are all creatures. This is a small creature. This is a medium creature, vitality of 5, vitality of 10. What this means is that that's a bonus on the vitality against dark background creatures. 
that's a bonus against cream background creatures. These sort of stone background are elementals. The, there's three types of creatures. The darks, which happen to be filling that deck, are externals. They can be anything from sort of evil type vampires to wood nymphs. So kind of magical creatures rather than elemental creatures or your bog standard mortals. Do I have any mortals here? Mortals essentially like humans. Um, or mutant pigs and things like that. Um, so you get those three types and you have uh, each one has a bonus against another one. Uh, then you have this. If that's uh, green it means it can uh, receive channeling. Uh, we don't have any with green here. So none of those can receive channeling. If there's also a number underneath it, it could give channeling. So not only can you channel from your uh, guardian, but also some special creatures. Then you have flavor text and or special abilities here. I won't go through all of those. Look, he gets extra vitality if he's in swamp. Uh, okay. And those secondary attacks, you can see um, what's going on. So we started with a shield there. We've also got another type of shield, which is standard bearer. So these shields you place on top of uh, groups of creatures and enables you to move them. They cannot move without a shield. These essentially function the same, but this one has a special ability on it. Um, we've got Druk. Now we ha this is a spell. Um, I'd already drawn these cards before. I didn't um, fix them, but I, I just drew them to all 12 out. You start with 12 cards. There's another shield. And uh, Tuchel happens to have uh, three spells, a magic item, and another creature there. So that's his starting hand. He could have possibly started out with um, terrain. If so, he would have put it down in one of his beginning three and claimed that disputed land right from the start. That isn't the case. What is the case for him though that is great is he, he has three um, shields which means he can put creatures down to manoeuvre them right at the beginning. Before that though he's going to put the spells and the magic item back here. They were essentially in his hand of cards. Um, in the rules it s says you should put them down in your, store, in your storage hand. Um, the point being is that at other times of the game you'll have a combat hand, so you, you don't want two hands of cards in your hands at any one point. Um, so he's got all these creatures, and um, there's three of medium size, two of small size. So just for sake of argument, I'm going to put um, one medium in each space. I'm going to put these two strongest cards together, they're going to come down here on the sort of right flank, as it were. And, oh, have we got any flies? Yes, we've got one flyer. Fly is good because it enables you to fly over. He's a flyer. He's going to go in the middle. These ones are going to have a special shield, which is plus vitality against flies. And I'm going to keep that in my hand. But uh, in the game they say put it under your um, guardian. So this is what's called my storage hand. He's in the creature pen. These are the magical items. Now we go over to Raknam. He starts out with uh, an iron crag bagler. He's got a standard bearer there. It's a shield. He's got a bantam drake. Plus seven vitality versus creatures with the ability to fly. So that one can fly as well. You can see they also have like dragon here. What type of creature they are. Because some um, creatures will be good against dragons. Or have a special ability against fairies. It's that kind of thing. Also note here the number. Uh, your up number is normally vitality. This card doesn't normally have any special characteristics. That's its up number. Um... And you can see that the blacks all have a bonus against mortals. It's unfortunate that this is a deck of elementals, but that's just the way I've done it. It's just a demonstration game. We've got a rogue spectre. Off-colour bonus, that's this bonus. The spectre uses off-colour bonus of your previous matchup card. This is mortals. Okay, so you get some quite sort of um, specific special powers, which means you, it gets quite... 
thought from the tactics vampire lord fungus tiny flying fungus they are flyers they are ranged attacks another shield king of misfortune see he doesn't look very evil but he's mixed in with vampire lords crystal flash Brooklyn snooter and a black unicorn and a rock rat now I noticed a lot of flyers there what we're going to do is put the flyers together they're going to be in one group we've only got two shields so one of these your fellows all start in a stronghold we're going to put the flyers under a shield for one power this one for one power stone that's a power of stones you can change a creature's border color in a matchup that's great let's put that this is our kind of power our strong force i'm going to put them all together under there then here we've got lots of two medium fellows and lots of smalls often that determines you know the medium fellows tend to have more vitality than the smalls it's not always the case but the smalls might have great special abilities but i'm just using that as a sort of basic sort out we'll put the vampire lord there the rogue specter here and i think i want the rogue specter is just going to be on defense so he's in the stronghold but not under a shield this one is under the shield um i think i'm going to leave this is in the stronghold not under a shield this is in the stronghold not under a shield. No, that one's going to go with the Vampire Lord. Because I've got quite a few creatures. Okay, and this one's going to be not under a shield. So that means these ones are in the same um, location, but they won't be able to move. And that's fine. So that's the start. Um, then we turn the up cards. And... We have a vitality seven here and a vitality three here. So this fellow is going to go first. Um, so Raknam can decide what to do for it. So he will it, either he, he does he can't pass as far as I know. So it doesn't indicate in these rules. So you, you, you choose a shield and you move it. Now because this isn't controlled by me, remember we've got six spaces, so two rows of three here. Um, he can only move one. If that was controlled by me, he could move one in my control and two into the opponent's. So he can just move forward one and we turn it to indicate they've gone. Now the second player has to go. Now, um, essentially we want to move out and claim some territories. So that's quite a safe move. Again, this is moving out claim that territory but yes these are flyers so what we can do with flyers you can move over territory so they can move the full two bang claiming that territory um as you can see i should have done that first shouldn't i to make sure that we weren't being opposed so this fellow now has to say hmm do i stay here do i move one two one two or um do i attack there uh, couldn't stay here if I did you can only have one of your shields in the same space I could if for certain reasons like in retreat I could um, put take out one of my shields but I would give it to my opponent as one of the five shields for victory so that would not be a clever move I might move there I don't want to leave this undefended so essentially he either has to stay or go into the attack I could move him instead I think that's what we're going to do move him out and so he's moved all his two shields i've got one shield left i can see that's a big stack i can't see normally these creatures would all be face down so just in case of accidental slippages you can't see who your opponent is um i can but i can just see that that's a big stack i don't fancy fighting it with one even if i've got these um special spells what I think mm, the spells don't really help me at the moment and I think I'm just going to leave that one there so um, there's no combat this turn so we go the next turn oh 
no, sorry, what we do now, I, I need to um, claim this land. Ah, that was a mistake. So essentially what happens, if I should have um, uh, to claim this, I need a terrain card. I don't have any terrain cards, so what I can do is take from out of my creature pen or in my storage hand, even magical items, and I can turn one of these over. So I'm going to say that I didn't, these, I kept these in my hand. I didn't play them to the table. So I'm going to turn these over. These creatures are out of the game, but that is now my terrain. I'm going to put one here. That's, a, that's just a, a sort of placeholder for standard terrain. That is now my um, land. So I, this uh, Racknam has two lands. And I can put one here. So Tukul has a land there, and we can do one of these spells that enables him to go first and turn. That enables him to look at opponent's hand. Never very valuable as a solo player, so we'll use that. So um, we each happen to have two disputed lands. Um, so. And no one's got six of them, so no one's won. So we go to the beginning of the next turn. I do have these handy cards to remind me, but it's it's quite simple, really. Um, we draw cards. Now, uh, so Racknam gets three. So the least or the most disputed lands is not on, in question. He didn't get the lowest up card, so he cut the highest up card and went first last turn. So he gets that is his first card from his deck. Gets one, two, and three. So we've got a spell and two creatures there. Now, um, two call cool. again gets a base three, nothing from the disputed lands. He got the lowest up card, which will give him plus one. And because of his special ability, his up card was a small creature. So he's going to get a bonus one. So he actually gets one, two, three and then plus one and plus one so now at the same time and you can um uh, there you can if if opponents are worried you can um there's a ruling i think you draw up cards to determine who would go first and if one of you is sort of holding back trying to look at what the other fellow did now there's a couple of mortals in this hand and a shield an extra magic item so the magic item immediately goes here Unless I want to play it straight away. Um, so the shield would, would be handy to get manoeuvre element here. But I've only got three creatures. So I'm going to have to... Def I've got a manoeuvre element here, here and here. So I'm actually going to keep that shield handy. Keep those in my hand. I'm going to put down the Rock Lord. Actually, I'm going to keep just one of them. I'm going to put down the Rock Lord and the Brown Back in the Stronghold here. Don't forget, we get a Vitality bonus in the Stronghold, so I'm hoping that's going to be a decent matchup in case they go for Alice. Stronghold. Um, and then on Racknam only has three cards, he has a spell, so that's going to stay there in his storage hand. And he, he can't put these here, he can only put them in the stronghold. He doesn't have an extra shield, so he could keep them in his hand. He actually wants to get them out. I'm going to put one in each of those positions, actually, one there to defend that. Um, okay, no, actually one here. Okay, so that's a uh, just creating storage hand and placing cards. Um, if you ever you ever have 
one, two, three, four, five, six. If you have more than seven, you have to discard down to seven. So you can only have seven cards in your hand. So we turn that up cards, vitality two, vitality twelve. So Ducal is going to go first. Um, he has to turn a shield and then he can move it. So these two are adjacent. Uh, that they are adjacent, so he, this shield, for example, could turn and move there, or turn and move there. If it was a flyer, it could fly over there, go in two spaces into there, or it could fly over there like that, for example. It couldn't stay on there unless I destroy one of my shields. don't really want to do that. What I'm going to do... Is make a move. I'm going to turn this shield and make a move to there. So Racknam has to decide he's not going to attack um, the stronghold. He's going to attack. He's turning. That's not his. So he couldn't go one, two. And that's not his because he flew over. Ah yes, he's flying, isn't he? So he could fly against them. But no, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that one and this one is going to turn and attack here. So what we do for this is we go to um, combat hands. We take up each of those two fellows and we, we go to fighting. I'm going to pop this down here to... Um, clarify that for us. So essentially I'm going to put the attacker at the top and the shield I'm going to leave there turned to remind us it's turned and that's in his combat hand. And this is the, um, uh, that's the actual terrain card so he's only got two in his combat hand but we don't know, the opponents don't know so we just know they have some creatures, we don't know how many they are you can hide that from your enemy and it's important in this sense you both at the same time choose one. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to so he plays his rock spirit, which is the weaker of his two. Um, but first, oh yes, you can go for command. Now some creatures have a special. C with a dash through it is a command. If I play these right at the beginning of the combat in the command segment, this special effect comes into effect for the whole battle. So he can dispel the command card and he can give plus five vitality versus creatures defending in strongholds. So he would have been good if we were fighting against one of those strongholds. Not so useful. I'm going to pretend. I, I, as this as the, as rack now, I'd either have to say, do I play him as command card, hoping that I'm, the other players playing command card, I dispel it, or do I hold him back and I can use him in combat for his vitality? He wouldn't normally be doing both. Um, command cards don't normally fight each other, although it can happen. So let's just for the sake of it say, um, Black decided, okay, I'm playing the Iron Crag Battle as command card. And um, the uh, Tuchel says, I have no command card. So that's out of the combat. But he will count, for, count at the end for a control. So um, essentially, whoever has the most vitality left at the end, um, combined vitality, will control that land. But one thing I didn't mention is you can have a maximum of 30 vitality under any one shield or any, in any one location, a disputed land or a stronghold. So that's something to watch out for. So the fact the blacks had 24. And I'll have to check. I might have too much in their flying um, stack. Uh, and the, um, uh, the elementals here have 15. So anyway, now so so that's the command card, and now we each choose our pri primary attack. So first match up. So um, I'm going to say that I'm going to play the King of Mistfall first on this side, 
let's just say it went up against the rock spirit. So um, these are primaries. First matchup is Vitality 5 versus Vitality 8. King of Mistful adds Vitality to Fairies, etc. Um, but we have no other fairies in play at the moment. So um, 5, he gets plus 1 versus a black. He gets 0. He's actually bribable by beer. So if um, Tuchel had beer in his hand, he could play it now and uh, bribe the King of Mistful away. And then he would go essentially back to the hand here. Um, that's not the case. So we have a straight vitality matchup. 8 versus 6. So the King of Mistful is beating the Rock Spirit. We put him on top like that to indicate this. Sorry, that was out of focus. And I'm going to zoom in a bit just so you get a bit more vision of what's going on. So he's winning. So then the next matchup has to be these two. We have a Vampire Lord, Vitality of 12, no off colour bonus. Vitality of 10, no off colour bonus against them. If the Vampire Lord beats an opponent, who has accepted channeling, your opponent loses two power stones. So the vampires can drain your power stones if channeling are coming on. All your vampires are plus three vitality when Vampire Lord is in play. So if I had any other vampires, I would have put them in this group, but I don't. Um, the Mist Veiler has no secondary attacks. Okay, these are primary attacks. Um, so that would be a straight 12 versus 10 in this case. So he would be winning. Now if, say, the Iron Battle hadn't been played as a command card, um, the, the Tuchel is out of cards, so that's all the primary attacks. Now we would get a secondary attack. That would mean that the Iron Battler can add his vitality to the um, vitality that we have uh, here. I won't go into the certain ramifications of it at this point, but essentially that's what a secondary attack is. Um, also, if you had a ranged um, fellow, even in the primary attack, you could add the ranged uh, combat value vitality into it. But anyway, here's command, so we only have primary attacks. And in this case, um, uh, the uh, Ratnam's forces are defeating both of two calls, so they go to the discard pile. Here and we count up um, uh, who has the most um, vitality in the at the end. Now, as it happens, because uh, all of Tuchel's forces are gone, the shield is destroyed. I'm going to put that here to show that Ragnam has gained one out of the five shields he needs as a possible victory condition. So um, it might have happened. That for example, just let's say for the sake of it, um, this card was a command card. So it wasn't in the primary matchup and it was a command card on Tuchel's side. So then that, that he would be he wouldn't wouldn't have been destroyed in combat. So he would be left. So then what we would do is we would count up so these are all left, we count up their vitality against his, and the winner would take control of the region, of the, 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 the land location and um, the uh, loser would have to retreat. Okay, but as it happens that was a straight win for Raknam and so he was disputing this land there. Okay, so that was Raknam's move, so now we go to the next turn. So we have to turn a shield whether we're going to move it or not. So this shield has to be turned and I'm going to keep it. Um, turned there. I'm also going to have to do something. I'm going to have to cast this spell. Play on any space after turning your up card, but before moving your shields, no movement into, out of, or over the space until the next turn. So I could have played that on here, or for example here. So um, to protect that, at the moment the danger is that this fellow could fly one, two, straight into that stronghold, and it being undefended, it would be rubbled immediately. 
I just need to check I don't have too much vitality going on here. Oh, I've got one there that couldn't have been there. I'll leave that in the hand. Um, so we've got 13, 20. Yeah, I've got 32, so I wouldn't have been able to have all of those. So actually, let's say they were left behind there. Okay. Oh no, that one was the terrain, wasn't it? Okay. Um, so, 28. Um, so, they've gone. Now it's, it's Rack Nam's go. So he has to turn another shield. He's only got one more shield, so it has to be this one. I think it's obvious he flies from there to there and rubbles that stronghold. That, I believe, happens. No, it won't happen immediately. So, um, Tukong would now get to go. If he had another shield in play, he could turn it and move and fight this one here. But he doesn't. All the shields that are on the Board. Um, that one's in hand, remember, our, um, let's put this one under there, to show it's conquered. All the shields on board have been turned, so we go to the end terrain settlement, um, which means that this one is now rubble, that's just rubble, and this is, was, um, held by a Tuchel, that's discarded. And now I have to place terrain cards under here. And I don't think I have to do it there. I don't have one here, so I'm taking that from my hand. Taking that here. We have one here, so it's not so easy to see, but these ones are both owned by Tuchel. And these one, two, three are owned by Rack Nam. It would be clearer if they had terrain depictions on them. Is that the... It would be facing um, the side for Rack Nam, for example. Okay, so that's clear. So uh, we go to the next turn. Um, So he gets three, minus one for having the least disputed land. So he only gets two. His up creature was not small, so he doesn't get that bonus. Now Raknam gets three, plus the most disputed lands gives him plus one, and plus one because he had the lower up card last turn. So he gets a whopping four cards. And in that, he actually gets a terrain, so that's going to be handy. He gets another shield, and he gets three more creatures, all small. So we're going to put the shield down here with a creature. And we're going to put two more creatures under here. I'm doing it just a bit quickly and arbitrarily just for demonstration purposes. Um, okay. You might be wondering what happens if you're claiming territory at the end of the turn and you don't have any cards in your hand. In that case, it's a bit awkward. You actually lose one of the creatures from under your shield. If you only had one creature, that shield would then be destroyed. So it's, you have to be very careful. Um, managing your move so if you don't if you don't have a card you can put down as terrain you don't move into terrain because you can put any of these cards in your hand now okay so what we're going to do for the up cards, we're going to play that so he cannot move off the force barrier. I 
until next turn. So what that means is that Tuchel will not be threatened. I believe that that's unclear in the rules whether they fight Tuchel from there or else they have to move off there to fight Tuchel. It says that the word moving through the stronghold, so I imagine they would have to go there. It's not clear if you actually have to physically move or just fight through it. Okay, so the Force Bearer is going there and that costs a power stone, so that is gone. And Tuchel's seven. Um, He's got a shield. He needs to do something quite clever quite quickly. He's going to put these two under here. Oh, and these should all be turned back upright. Okay. Um, any other spells that would be handy? Now this Helm Brothers Hood's handy, I'm going to play it now, it's as good a time as any. Look at the top five face down cards from the opponent's deck, place them back in any order you wish. Any cards may be placed on the bottom of your opponent's deck. They're immediately after up cards have been pulled, so we'll pull the up cards. Okay, a shield and a moon spirit, that's 13, that's 8, so Ragnar will be going first. Tuchel plays Helm of the Brotherhood and looks at top five face down. One, two, three, four, five cards. We have a white unicorn, old mold, a skeletal minion, and a zombie. A zombie can accept channeling and so can the skeletal minion. So they would be very powerful for Ratman if he so wishes and an ice storm spell. Play that instead of a command card, a card you play right at the beginning of combat or the matchups. And that's an area attack. Uh, versus flyers. One, two, three, four, five. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all I'm gonna put the old mold on top, put all the others down below because they're quite strong cards. The old mold is weak, so he can get that. Yeah. Let him have that. Okay. Oh. Ah, I should have drawn cards. Um, I forgot to do that. Let's. So I've mixed that up, but for, just for sake of it, I'll draw cards from the. Oh no, I have drawn cards, haven't I? We've lain them. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So. Um, Don't have a whole lot in our hands, so we're going to discard down to seven. Okay, from the up cards, the active player turns the shield. So, um, Rackman has a shield, he's going to move, he's going to turn this one and move on to here Just for an attack straight away. I want you to see as much of that as possible. Um, okay, so here's the defender, here's the attacker. Remember, normally you, you wouldn't know how many cards your opponent has. That's the same fellows as before. Now, um, he's going to put him in first. He's again, he's going to keep the Ankrag Bagler back. Um, is a command card played. I could play magic items from here spells he doesn't have any so there's no command card the king of mistfall is eight vitality um versus the primordial goo which is 12 he's plus three vitality in swamp we're not on a swamp because they don't have any swamp terrain anyway Ragnan is going to spend a power stone and he's able to channel to the king of mistfall he had the, has the green bar there so he's going to add nine to the vitality of eight now, Primordial Goo needs some support. Um, Thunderhawk can give a 13 point ranged attack, or he has Vitality of 1. He will die when he uses his ranged attack, but as his Vitality of 1 is not going to help, 
So we're going to add a ranged attack here. So we have 13 plus 12 gives us 25 against 8 plus 9 from the challenge, channeling. Um, let me put that stay in there to remind us about the channeling. So that's uh, um, 17 here versus 25 here. So that's a win. Now um, that means these, this one, the, the primordial goo is beating the king of mist for. That's all. Rachnan and Tuchel can bring to that primary attack. Second primary attack, um, Vampire Lord is going in. But um, uh, uh, Tuchel has to say, I have no other creatures, so there's no further primary attacks. Now this is bad for Tuchel, because what that means is no secondary attacks going in. The Vampire Lord can go in as a secondary attack. So he can support the King of Mistfall. Now the in the secondary attacks, you go to the base vitality, so the channeling doesn't count. Um, so we have a base vitality of 8, plus his 12 gives us 20. Is that enough versus the 25 that we already had here? Now, is it, because it's a secondary attack, again, we go to the base vitality, which means that the Thunderhawk's ranged attack doesn't count. So... Um, the King of Mistfall is still defeated, but the Vampire Lord can now add to the King of Mistfall and defeat the Primordial Goo, so, because it, we have 12 not counting the 13. And then the Iron Crag Bagler could also, I believe he could also come and join in, but it's not necessary. So he will just stand out. So essentially, in the primary attack, the primordial goo, with the support of the Thunderhawk, defeated the King of Mistfall. In the secondary attack, the channeling and the ranged attack are not counted. So Vampire Lord plus the King of Mistfall's basic vitality beats the primordial goo. So we end up with the King of Mistfall being discarded, defeated, and the primordial goo being discarded, defeated. Now he's still in play, and these two are in play. Their vitality together is 16, and his is only 1. But he actually dies, doesn't he? As he, um, and I believe he's discarded rather than destroyed out of the game. So that shield goes to Rachnan, who now has two shields, and these fellows will go back and... They are sitting on the stronghold there. It looks like it's going to be a short game. Okay, um, so it's Tuchel's turn. He has to turn a shield. So what he's going to do is turn this shield and then go into attack here. Okay, so they've both got turned shields. I just need to remember that when I put them back. What do we have? He's the attacker now, he's the defender. So um, he's not going to send in Iron Bagler as a command card. We have no command possible here. Could um, play a spell perhaps, a magic item, not able to. Okay, so I'm going to send in Brown back as my first, and he's going to send in the Bagler as his first matchup in the primary attacks. So that's a Four versus a three, no other bonuses coming into play. Those brown backs will get plus four vitality versus a large creature. The iron bagler is small, so the iron bagler is winning that. Have we got any ranged attacks? Um, ah, he has an area of effect attack. I think I should have played that at the beginning. Hang on. Okay, I'm actually going to go back a step because um, the Rock Lord has an area of effect attack. So if he goes in first, um, okay, he just has a standard matchup against an Iron Crag Bagler, which he wins, by the way. Also, his three point area of effect attack, any um, three point or less vitality creatures in the combat hand of um, Rachnan would be destroyed as the Rock Lord goes in. 
and it can be modified that his particular effect can um, be increased with different elementals in play so you can see how um, you can tailor your decks if you have a rock lord in it add other elementals try and get them together in the same stack and that you can have a very powerful combo um, that's not the case here um, but he's beating the Ironclad Bagler for the second matchup. I'm going to send in the leading fella. We've got 8 plus 2 uh, for the off colour bonus. He's immune to fire, no effect here. Um, so we have 10 versus 12. So the Vampire Lord defeats the Druk, but in the secondary attack. Uh, Tuchel is able to add three here, which to the eight and to the eleven. Oh, it doesn't quite it isn't quite enough, so he's going to stay out. Um, and essentially, Struck is defeated. The Ancrag Bagler is defeated, and that means we have fifteen vitality versus twelve vitality. So, um. Tuchel's forces have won and they will stay here and Raknams have to retreat one. Fortunately that's their um, territory or their land as well so that's okay you only have a retreat one space. So I think you can see how um, the tactics of this play out. It is a card game um, and it's a deck building game in the sense of, oh, it's a collectible card game in that sense you build your deck, you're looking for um, powerful combos and um, you are moving them around in this terrain. That's what lets me think that it's uh, allowable as a war game, um, not just a card game. You can imagine rethemed um, into um, say a Second World War situation, you would have a a, a war themed uh, card game. Card game. Um, anyway, I'm going to continue. That might be enough for most of you. you sort of got the flavour of it. Um, there's a, a, more subtleties can come in. Um, I haven't we've seen channeling, but you can uh, depending on text of cards and you know combinations playing off against each other. That this is basically the game, so I don't think there's particularly any. There'd just be some odd details, but I don't think there's any more specifics to the game that would come in after this. Like I said, I haven't been able to show you the bribery, but essentially that happens. If you cast it as a spell, as it were, out of your hand, as a surprise out of your hand. Um, so sorry, bravery actually occurs in the matchup. So, for example, if I had a babe versus um, uh, I don't know a titan in a matchup, and the titan is bribed by babes, then we wouldn't check the vitality. The babe would bribe him away. The babe will go back, will come out, and uh, the um, titan will be counted as uh, not destroyed but again he would go back to the hand so he wouldn't count in that um, either in those matchups or in the deciding who um, has control of the territory at the end um, and essentially that is it you can have healing things like that happen and the, the, the combat can get quite complicated um, but you can see why I feel there's a similarity to um, Titan here. Um, obviously some great dissimilarities. We've got the terrain, but we, we, and we have the moving creatures, but uh, it's also similar to, to, you know, like magic and so forth, having your base creature, your sort of controlling card. Okay, anyway, so just to continue, um, so whose go was it? That was their go. Uh, so now um, Raknam has to turn a shield, so he's going to move this one forward. 
He's not going to leave anyone behind, has he? Not too big. Well, yeah, he can do that. Okay, and there, Tuchel has to turn his last shield. Is he going to move it forwards? No. I don't think he is. He needs a bit more power. Okay, so all the shields are turned. Except for this one. That one's going to turn, but it's not able to move or do anything. It just has to stay there. Okay, so we get back to the terrain. So these are still two calls. Now, this one can be cleaned, so I can actually put a terrain card down. And that spires. No flying into, out or over. I played a game prior to this and I put all the terrain that I had down at the beginning which made it a bit more interesting to sort of have some more tactical choices, um, you know, like blocking with um, flyers and creating an interesting space to start the game with rather than developing randomly as it goes on. That's always the, the uh, problem with the card games is you're dependent on what you draw from your hand and you know you might be unlucky you don't get what you need your opponent's lucky gets what he needs and you just get a, a runaway winner from the start okay so that spell has finished um we don't actually have any change of hands of terrain except for that one what this now means is that Racknam has four out of the six and Tuchel has two out of the six Disputed lands. Racknam also has two s shields and he is threatening Tuchel with a di direct attack. Um, Tuchel, by the way, cannot channel to himself. He cannot channel to himself, so he will only be able to defend or, and uh, uh, fight that with a vitality of 23 plus any magic or, or extra cards that I might have. Um, and just to let you know, there were, there were, I think, three expansions, so there are quite a lot of cards out there, and different types of cards for the game, so I believe you can get quite exciting decks to build based on what had been released. Um, and it was a very popular card game for some people, unfortunately the company released another card game quite soon after, which didn't do quite so well. It didn't do astoundingly well, but it... People did sort of leave Magic the Gathering to play this, um, but anyway, the company folded and it was not supported. Or perhaps it wasn't supported because they were concentrating on their second game and and then the company folded. And so the game essentially died, but it's of interest to some of us and uh, I wanted to, to get it out there, get a video of it. It's a, it's a wonderful looking game and I think it, it's a very interesting game tactically. I'd love to play a uh, two player because you're hiding under these shields, you don't know what your opponent has. Um, there's, and you've got your, you've got your own hand, then you have a combat hand. Each combat is a separate little mini game in itself. Um, okay, and you can see how uh, having lots of small creatures can help against one or two big creatures. So you, you might be able to only have two or three big creatures because of the 30 vitality stacking limit. But if you have lots of small creatures, you can add them in, in, in secondary attacks, even if you're losing on the primary attack. So in that way, I think we could see um, a few powerful creatures overwhelmed by many less powerful creatures. The problem is, is getting them out into your hand. So th this is where we are, isn't it? So... Um, Racknams again getting three cards base plus one for having the most disputed lands and two court gets two minus one from his base for having the least disputed lands but plus one for having the lowest up card and not plus one for having a small creature up card. Okay, so he's in I think we're going to have an attack against Tuchel straight away um, because we have a black unicorn that can accept challenging. Rackman can challenge. You can challenge 
channel, sorry, you can channel as many times as you have stones, even to the same creature. Which is how we're going to defeat Tuchel. Um, okay. Okay, these are just sort of fairly weak creatures, some special abilities that would help them individually, but not particularly straight off. Now, this stronghold can be entered straight from here, because this, this, this land is held, this beauted land is held by Raknam, so this shield can actually move one and then two through his own territory onto our stronghold, so I'd better put some here. I can't put any there, because it's, it's not mine anymore rubbled and turned to the opponent's side. Okay, uh, and we get another shield. There's a magic item, the Rocks of Skull Crackle. That is very powerful against flying creatures. And there's some powerful creatures here as well. I'm going to put them there. They can move into to there, possibly. Um, okay. So, we go to the up card. 